All right. What's up, everybody? I bumped the record a little bit there when I was switching over. Ah, oh, Nico says I got to go to a meeting. <laughs> all right, Nico, thanks for dropping by. Good to see you in here. <laughs> We've all been there. Don't worry. We're recording this so you can watch the playback. You can still see if you can be faster than whomever gets it first. Oh, man. Yes, indeed. Yeah, this weekend we got Victor K versus Juiced. It's going to be a very exciting match. I think it's, uh, I think we're going to see some epicness for sure uh, in these matches this weekend. We got Ivan versus the Golden Spam Fish. And then we got Victor K versus Juiced. Man, what is going to happen? <laughs> It's going to be good. I I know all these matches now. We're in the Elite 8, you know. This is uh this is it. Anybody who makes it through, you know, the the people who make it through this weekend, the people who make it through next weekend, they're going to November 11th to the finals. Um we did spin up a a website for the finals. Um let me show you guys what that looks like. Just in case anybody, you know, happens to be in the area. Uh, you guys can come on by, you can register. Let's see here. Let me flip this over. Here we go. So it's twotalltoby.com slash finals. Twotalltoby.com slash finals. So if you guys want to check that out, um, we do have this. I think this is an absolutely epic flyer here. You guys remember this last year when Allness and Tom Smith were, were competing on the big screen in the big arena? We all remember this, right? We can go back and watch the video. This is exactly what it looked like. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to do it again this year. Uh, we got a conference center. Conference center set up uh, at the uh, at the local hotel. And we're going to just totally rock it. Uh, the, the runners aren't going to be there, unfortunately. They will still be at their home base on their, you know, completely optimized... 3D CAD machines. Uh, but if you want to check us out, twotalltoby.com slash finals. If you happen to be in the area that day, sign up, register, come on by. We would love to see you. Uh, we're going to be hanging out, having a live studio audience. And I think it's going to be a really good time uh, for those finals. But, you know, before we get to those finals, we got to get through this weekend. We got to get through the Elite Eight this weekend. Next year's will, sponsors will fly out the semifinals to compete on Solid Box tuned machines. Yeah, I like the sound of that. Plus, we get Solid Box World next year. Don't forget. So when we do Solid Box World, we're gonna um, we're gonna definitely have some kind of a live tournament there. I don't know if it's gonna be a full 32 or if we'll do like a 16 or an eight. We'll we'll figure it out. But Solid Box World, definitely the tournament is gonna be live in person. Uh, in a major auditorium, maybe at the Sphere, maybe at the Sphere in Las Vegas. I don't know if we're quite there yet to the Sphere in Las Vegas, but that's what we're shooting for. That's the end goal. Might miss the finals live because it's my daughter's birthday. Well, listen, family is first. Very important, X Machina. Uh, but I'm going to be watching the replay multiple times. Thank you, thank you. Glad that you're going to be watching that multiple times. Uh, let's see here. Can you add a link to the top bar, like on top bar of 2 Toby, to the tournament page? Yeah, twotalltoby.com slash tournaments. The top bar of Two Tall Toby to the tournament page. Oh, yeah, I thought we used to have one. That's funny. Yeah, I, I don't have one to the tournament page. You're right. Great suggestion. Jern, you're my QC guy. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. And Gonzalo is here. says, did the CSW PWD last Friday, even though I had a perfect score? What is the fastest way to select all non-overlapping elements in a 3D sketch? In this case, edges of the 3D sketch. Uh, filters and control A don't remove. Uh, that's interesting. Just select the non-overlapping stuff. I haven't done that enough to know offhand. I'd have to just try it and mess around with it. Um, sometimes in those spots when I have a lot of overlapping geometry, um, I will actually go through and just like do conversions, like just convert entities. I kind of use like the overlapping junk as a layout and then I do convert entities to get, you know, to get what I actually want from that 3D sketch. So I've definitely been there, uh, Gonzalo, but 
I don't know if there's a way to just like insta select everything and have SolidWorks filter out whatever's not overlapping. I think it's just gonna select everything. It's, that sounds like that's what you're experiencing, and that's pretty much what I experienced too. So, um, yeah, I'd have to just I just have to try it, and mess around with that. Like I said, a lot of times in those spots, I just make a new sketch, a new 3D sketch, and then convert entities to stuff that I want. Striker in the chat saying, "Don't forget, hit the like button all day long." Every, every ong, everyone. Hit the like button, everyone. Sahil is here. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Guys, thanks so much for joining all of us today. This beautiful Monday. If you're here for the first time, be sure to let us know in the chat. We would love to uh, say hello to anybody who is new here today. Don't forget to hit the like button and let's get into it. Model Monday Live, October 16th. We got the Elite Eight tournament kicking off this weekend the people who were able to make their way through the entire bracket of 32 and get to the top eight we have the black bracket sponsored by joko engineering joko just made a new video this weekend 50,000 subscribers and he made a custom youtube play button using a really cool hexagonal mesh running across a curved surface he did it in a libre he did it in freecad definitely check out that video very cool stuff and of course, huge thank you to Solid Box sponsoring the blue bracket, mysolidbox.com, founders of Solid Box World, kicking off next year, 2024, live technical tips and tricks conference, Solid Box World. Very excited for that next year as well. I'll be there. I'll definitely be there. And the Solid Box guys are flying out too for the uh, for the finals. They're going to be here with me on November 11th. So uh, really, really good stuff. X Machina Engineering in the chat, co-signing, saying, yes, very excellent video from Joko today. Check it out. Uh, definitely worth watching. Yes, 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 indeed. All right, guys, today we're going to do two CAD speed modeling challenges. We're going to take a look at the new website. We're going to talk about some live solves using Onshape. These are truly live solves. They're usually cold takes. I usually uh, don't practice ahead of time. I just rip through it. I really want to do that uh, tri bracket today. So here's what we have to choose from for the uh, um, for to for my tutorials in on shape. If there's any in here that really jump out to you, let me know. I'm definitely going to do the tri bracket. I'll probably start with that one. But this is 57, the square mount. If you want me to do this in on shape, just type it into the chat. Uh, this one we already did last week, the through bracket, and I made a really cool tutorial. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw it, but I did a tutorial in SolidWorks and in on shape. Uh, of a very similar model to this. It's actually got five millimeter wall thickness, five millimeter radius, and a couple of the dimensions changed, but a very similar model to this. Uh, you know, very cool to do the tutorial in both CAD software. So check that out for sure. Um, we got the uh, counter shaft. If you guys want me to do this one, put a 56 in the chat. The socket, if you want me to do this, put a 53 in the chat. And uh, we already solved that one. The support base, you can put a 41 in the chat if you want me to do that one. And the housing, this one was really cool, 58. If you want me to solve that one, you can put a 58 in the chat. And finally, the tri cap uh, number 61. Actually, I'm definitely going to do this one so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, Gonzalo in the chat, hooking it up. Great question. When are the website exercises coming? The ones that evaluate and the answer and give points. So uh, that's gonna that's gonna be coming. Uh, I just talked to my web dev guy today about that. We're uh, we're still working on the data model for that. It's gonna be just like you said. If you do one of the practice model exercises, you're gonna be able to earn uh, earn points or TTT cash, which is basically like points. Um, and uh, we're gonna be launching that. But there's a lot. That we're doing um, on top of that with the data model to make it you know not only fun but also valuable to you um, to kind of help you show your progress and track your progress so it's a full data model which is why it's taking a little bit longer to roll out we, phase one was get the website up and running get the nfts posted get the the general store working properly get the user profiles all working properly and then phase two is the incorporation of the Really, phase two is incorporation of the leaderboard, and then phase three is incorporation of the practice models uh, right onto the website. So, um, great question, Gonzalo. Thank you for asking that. I'm glad you're excited about that. I'm very excited about it as well. Uh, for now, best thing you can do is just go through the practice models playlist. So, when you go to the, um, 
So this is the website here. Um, when you go to the website, if you go on the homepage, you can see there's a link here to practice models. And then this is gonna link you to the YouTube playlist. Well, once we get the, the incorporation of this new functionality on the website, you're gonna be able to take your answers from YouTube and just drop them right in here on the site. You're not gonna have to redo the models or anything. So if you just go through here and do the models on the, on the practice models, oh, I'm sorry guys, I'm not showing my screen. Let me go back here. Here we go. So um, so here we are at the Tutal Toby, the main website. You can see at the main website here, there's a button here uh, for practice models right on the home page. You can also take this coin here and flip it around if you want, if you want to just see what the TTT cash coin looks like. Um, it's pretty epic, pretty epic 3D model there. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, if you go here to where it says practice models, and then you go to this YouTube playlist and you start tearing through this YouTube playlist and just answering in the chat, you're going to be able to take those answers and just put them right onto, um, right onto the this new functionality that's coming. Earn TTT cash by completing the practice models. So it's not going to be time wasted. If you want to start making your way through the entire playlist and and just like doing all of these challenges, you're going to be able to migrate that right through and then get the points for it. So um, if my, you know, depending on how um, how uh, magical my web dev guy is, we might be able to actually scrape that data. But uh, I don't think it's gonna. I, I don't know if it's gonna happen or not. I don't want to make any promises. I don't want to like overpromise and underdeliver. Uh, but just so you know, yeah, if you guys if you guys go through and start doing that playlist for the practice models, you're gonna be able to use those answers directly on the website to earn that earn those points. So it's not gonna be time wasted. And if you've already done anything, you've already done everything that's on this playlist is gonna be able to be used as credit towards those challenges. So um, if you've already done these, if you did these before the website was even up, that's all good. As long as it's on this place, I did have to purge a bunch of stuff from before um, the magical date at the start of 2022. So um, I did purge most of that stuff or all of that stuff. So uh, unfortunately those older, way older ones aren't gonna count, but anything that's on this playlist is gonna count towards those challenges, towards those points. So um, yeah, thank you for asking that question. And Jern is saying, nice, I think I'm about two thirds of the way through the practice models, that's awesome. Yep, so you're gonna just like, all of a sudden have this huge balance of TTT cash um, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be epic. All right, guys, don't forget, if you want to support the channel, the best way to support the channel is to hit the like button, to add some comments, participate in the chat, um, and uh, subscribe to the channel. Maybe when the live stream is over, come back, you know, and leave a comment afterwards. Or, of course, share. Anything you can do to share and reshare the channel is hugely helpful. All of the stuff that we're posting about the tournament, just take it and repost it on your social media network. Just, like, click the reshare button. Uh, all that stuff is super, super helpful. You might not think it is. You might not think your network is that big, but trust me, it's it's very, very helpful. So even if you just, you see me post something and you just say reshare on Twitter or reshare on LinkedIn or reshare on Facebook or wherever, you know, wherever you're following me, um, it's super helpful when you share and you reshare. Uh, it really helps to kind of grow the network. All right, so with that, let's get into our first CAD speed modeling challenge. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you a 2D print. I'm going to ask you to take a screen capture of that, put it over on your second monitor, and begin modeling it in 3D. And then uh, when you're done, you're going to calculate the mass, and you're going to enter that mass directly into the YouTube chat. Now, as far as the rules go, you can use any 3D CAD package as long as you can input density and output mass. And some people... Don't even have a CAD package that can input density and output mass, but they can calculate volume, so they just do it manually. I've seen people do a, a manual calculation. I think that's pretty epic. Uh, make sure when you answer, you use the specified precision. So if I say, what is the answer in xx.xx pounds, make sure you put it in at least two place precision. If you put it in five place precision, that's fine, but don't put it in zero place or one place precision or else you're not gonna be within spec. And the first person to answer correctly in the chat wins some points. Um, eventually, we're going to have this incorporated with the website, too, kind of continuing on uh, Gonzalo's uh, conversation. But that's like phase five or phase six, it's a little bit further down the line. Uh, so here is the uh, the units that we use for Model Monday Live. If you want to take a screen capture of this, it's good that you have knowledge of what types of units we use and what density we use, because it might be a little bit different in your CAD system. And uh, as far as advanced rules go, this is meant to be fun and good spirited. Occasionally, I will make a mistake. I'll leave a dimension off the print or something like that. Uh, so we just kind of figure out what to do in those spots and pivot. And uh, the Ivan exploit is permitted. So if you um, if you know about the Ivan exploit, you are welcome to try to use it. I can't do anything to stop you other than make the models unexploitable. All right, here we go. Let's flip over to our full screen here. 
And we're going to take a look at this first CAD challenge in three, two, one, go. What is the mass of this part in XXX grams? A little bit of an easier challenge today uh, compared to some of the ones we've seen lately. Not too much magenta. No magenta notes on the screen here. Uh, so uh, take a look at this challenge. Give it a try in your CAD system of choice. As long as you can input density and output mass, you should stand a chance of being the first one to finish this model. Uh, take note that this model does have symmetry along one, uh, along one plane, but only one. So take note of that. That's a little gotcha. If this was a modern Toby drawing, it would uh, it would definitely have some magenta to help you to not miss that. But uh, just take note. This model has symmetry along one plane. It's your little hint. So I'm going to bust open my tasty beverage here today. It's a, it's after 1 p.m., right? It's time to start, start drinking. And hopefully that was enough time for you guys to capture that using your screen capture software and move that over to your second screen. Because we're going to continue on with the presentation today. And of course, I want to thank Waterloo, flavored seltzer water. Uh, not sponsoring the channel yet, but I got a feeling eventually we're going to get them. They're going to be the sponsor because uh, I drink these things all the time. There's a lot of choices out there for sparkling water, but I got to recommend Waterloo. It definitely does the trick. Room temperature as well. Always room temperature. <laughs> All right, guys, good luck with this model. Let's get into it here. Let's talk real quick about the tournament. We talked at the intro about the tournament. The tournament is heading towards the finals now. Um, we start out with 32 people, 15 countries, eight different CAD systems. Uh, during the, uh, the matchup on the 28th, we lost Inventor. There's no longer any Inventor runners. So uh, we had the Black Bracket sponsored by Joko Engineering. Uh, it's going to be featuring... Ivan the Reasonable going up against the Golden Spamfish. The Golden Spamfish is running on shape in dark mode. Ivan the Reasonable running SolidWorks. Canada versus the United States. Who's going to be the champion of the Black Bracket? We're going to find out October 21st. And we're also going to find out who the champion is of the Blue Bracket. We got Juiced from the Netherlands running Ansys Space Claim going up against Victor K. He's in the chat today. You can ask him if, he, if he's nervous at all. Victor K running SolidWorks from the United States. Nice little multinational representation there. I like it. I like it. Uh, we're going to move down to the red bracket. The red bracket is sponsored by Alibre. Our friends at Alibre are going to get allow us to watch Imans running on shape from the United States going up against Jihan Rafa from Egypt running SolidWorks. So uh, that's going to be on October 28th. We're going to find out who is the champion of the red bracket. And then we're going to move over to the green bracket. We're going to see... Aaron C, he's in the chat today, going up against Pranav. Aaron C from the United States, Pranav from India. And that's going to be some SolidWorks on SolidWorks violence. It's the only SolidWorks versus SolidWorks match we see. So we know that SolidWorks will be the champion of the green bracket. And the green bracket is sponsored by our friends at Revo Point. Crocky is in the chat. What's up? What's up? Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Will already coming in with an answer. Continuing to show dominance during Model Monday Live. I like it. I like it. So, what does this all mean? What does it mean? Well, it means that, like I said, we're going to see a champion of the black bracket. We're going to see a champion of the blue bracket. And those people are going to move on to the final four. And while everyone wins a prize, the final four is really where the lion's share is. Third and fourth place get $125 each. Second place gets $250. And third or first place gets... $500 USD. That is a lot of purchasing power depending on where in the world you are. Uh, I want to thank, of course, Solidbox for helping put up that prize money. Uh, Solidbox makes engineering uh, workstations for professional engineers, professional workstations for professional engineers. You can visit them at mysolidbox.com. Huge supporter of the channel and of the tournament. Uh, I want to, of course, thank Joko Engineering. Here you can see a little preview of that uh, hexagonal pattern running across a curved surface in a Libre and in FreeCAD. 
Uh, Joko Engineering truly makes all of your 3D CAD dreams come true. And you can visit his YouTube channel. Just crossed over 50,000 subscribers. Excellent tips and tricks on a variety of CAD systems. Makes all of your 3D CAD dreams come true. Uh, check it out. It's really cool. A uh, really cool demonstration of creating kind of a complex pattern there in both the Libre and FreeCAD. Uh, we can see here that a Libre has put up some additional prizes for all of the runners in the tournament. Every single runner of the tournament is going to get a seat of a Libre. A Libre makes powerful yet easy to use 3D CAD software that's affordable. And uh, a Libre has three different flavors. They have Atom 3D, Pro, and Expert. And a Libre said, you know what? We want to give 3D CAD to everyone in the tournament. And so they put up prizes for every single runner in the tournament, everyone who competed. Um, 31st through third place is going to get a seat of a Libre Atom 3D, a lifetime license. Second place is going to get a Libre Design Pro lifetime license and the champion is going to get a seat of a libre design expert a lifetime license of a fully capable 3d cad system so cool so thankful to our partners at a libre uh really cool to see these prizes kind of going out to everybody and we've already started sending these out to uh the people who have already finished you know we're in the elite eight now so 24 people have already been eliminated we've already started contacting these people sending them out there at libre i saw muhammad on uh, LinkedIn this morning said, you know, thank you so much. I got my seat of a Libre. It's awesome. I'm so happy to, you know, to have a full seat of CAD. So happy to have been part of this tournament. So um, very cool. Very thankful to the sponsors at a Lib from a Libre. Um, really, really happy to be partnering with them. <laughs> Aaron said, boy, that felt clumsy for such a simple part. Yeah. Sometimes they're like that, right? I, I, uh, I kind of fumbled around with that part a little bit too when I was auditing it. And I mentioned RevoPoint. RevoPoint is sponsoring our tournament as well, our latest sponsor of the green bracket. And, man, RevoPoint is also really coming through. Uh, RevoPoint has for a long time been creating 3D scanners for the engineering market, trying to make 3D scanning technology available to everyone in the engineering space. Um, and they have come through and put up some of their scanners as prizes. So for fourth place, they have uh, put up the RevoPoint Inspire 3D scanner. Uh, fourth and third, you can't really tell the difference between fourth and third in a in a heads up bracket like this. So fourth and third are kind of like a tie. Uh, so fourth and third both are going to win a Revo Point Inspire bracket. Second is going to win a Revo Point Range scanner, and first place is going to win a Revo Point Mini scanner. So really nice prizes here for the top four. This is why everybody's trying to get through the Elite Eight this weekend, and. Uh, RevoPoint is also kicking off a brand new scanner. It's called the Morocco 3D Scanner. And uh, this is a scanner that really does it all. It's got different uh, optical lenses for the, or a different camera system for uh, large scale objects or very small objects. And it's got all of the computing power, the, the uh, visual representation, the display all built in. So just using this one single scanner, you're able to uh, do everything. That screen on the back there even flips up so you can do like a selfie mode if you needed to scan yourself for some reason or if you, you know, if you're at like kind of a funny angle on the parts that you're trying to scan, you can flip up that screen and kind of get around into those tight corners. So uh, so um, you can see here uh, that RevoPoint is kicking off this scanner in October, October 25th. Uh, on Kickstarter and there's a in the description down below on this live stream there is a link if you want to sign up for that early bird special and that'll get you 40% off so definitely check that out check out that link down in the description if you're interested in a 3d scanner and just check out Revo Point's website if you're interested in 3d scanning technology uh, really impressive the lineup that they've put together Gonzalo says a bit strange that the Libre prizes go from left to right 3d scanners go from right to left yep I am not, uh, I'm not good at that kind of stuff. So I just kind of, some people like get real, uh, you know, almost like OCD about that kind of stuff. And I'm kind of the opposite. I'm just like hyper scatterbrained. So I just let it rip, bro. This is how you got to do it sometimes. All right. So huge thank you to Revo Point. Huge thank you to all of our sponsors, Joko Engineering, My Solid Box, Revo Point, and Alibre. Awesome, awesome, having such great sponsors in here. Be sure to visit their websites, guys. Um, just kind of give them some love. Visit them on YouTube. Visit their websites. Uh, always helpful and um, really happy with these partnerships. I hope we can do it all again next year. I mean, we've got multiple tournaments set up for next year. So 
uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep this train rolling. All righty, it's a sign that they work well together. They meet in the middle. Yes, indeed. All right. Um, I saw some suggestions up top. Um, I think that what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna. I'm gonna forego the live demonstration until we get through this first model. I wanna make sure I give you guys enough time to do the second model. Um, so I think I'm just gonna, let me see, what time is it? What are we at, 28 past the hour? Now maybe I can tear through this one. I think I can probably tear through this one pretty quick. So here we go, let's just, let's just you know, let it rip here. Um, again, this is kind of a cold solve, so I haven't done this one before, but I have thought about it a lot, and of course, uh, I watched the runners do it, so I think I have a basic plan for this one. So I think my plan for this one is going to be to start out in on shape with a triangle that has three equal sides, and then what I'm going to do is make an edge flange sticking off of this edge here. So I'm going to make one edge flange. Now, when I go into the on shape settings, I'm going to make sure that I'm using the setting that allows me to have this edge flange start here. Uh, so this is going to be what's called the hold line edge flange, kind of a newer option in sheet metal in on shape. And I'm going to make that one single flange. And then I think what I'm going to do is go to essentially a front, you know, a front view. And I'm going to create this geometry here on the front of that edge flange that I created. I'll do it as a cut, you know, and I'll just kind of cut away that geometry. I could probably cut these holes here all in that one sketch. So I'll cut away all that geometry. Maybe I'll save the fillets. Maybe I'll do it as a sharp um, aside from the you know the one obvious fillet the uh you know this one here i'll probably do in this the original sketch but the rest i'll probably just do as a sharp or i guess i could just do the whole thing as sharps and then i'll go through and i'll add those fillets as a secondary feature and uh then i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a cut here looking down from the top i'm going to try and cut this thing like this at 120 degrees so I'll cut it like that at 120 degrees, and then I'll just do a circular pattern and rip that thing around, and hopefully that will allow me to come up with the correct mess. Um, I'm just, as I'm planning this thing out here, I'm realizing I don't think I have my answer key with me, so I'll have to, when I show you guys the next print, I'll go and grab my answer key. So I'm gonna move that over to my second screen. I'm gonna jump in here to Onshape, and we're gonna give this thing a try. Onshape just released some new functionality. About every three weeks, you get new functionality from Onshape, and it's kind of cool. They give you a heads up, and then they help you uh, understand what that new functionality is here, not only in text, but also in videos. Um, I really like the way Onshape communicates this type of information to the customers. So as soon as there's a new build, they just kind of know right away like, oh, okay, I got to look out for that. It's going to behave a little differently or it's going to behave a little better. And uh, I think Onshape does a great job of that when a new build comes out. So uh, excited to see that new build and excited to see if any of that functionality makes its way into this demonstration. Now, I'm going to call this 23-T-61-TriCap, and this is a public document. So if you want to sign up for a new free account at onshape.com slash free, then you would be able to search for this file name, and you would be able to find my file and actually um, uh, examine how I created this geometry. So you'd be able to see the full, uh, the full setup for this geometry. So I'm going to do this as an inscribed polygon, and then after I draw it, I just move my mouse to declare that I want there to be three sides on this thing. And then I will take this line here and press H to go horizontal. And then I will take this line here and type in 100 to give it 100 millimeters. And now from there, I'm just going to immediately turn this into sheet metal. So let's exit this sketch, jump into sheet metal. Um, and we're going to say this is going to be a, let's see, do we do this one as a convert or do we do this one as an extrude? Um, an extrude is usually more like a thin feature. So I think this is going to be a convert. Although I don't know if I've done a convert with just a sketch before. Hmm. All right, I think I'm going to have to actually... Wait, was there an option in there to choose a sketch? Faces to extrude, edges or cylinders to bend. Can I do it here? Faces to extrude? Nope, I think I need to actually turn it into sheet metal first. I wonder, what th I wonder if thicken will give it to me. Thicken, faces or sketch regions to thicken. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's what we needed. So yeah, I haven't, I haven't used that one before. I've used this a lot, extrude. I've used this a little, convert. And now we get to use a new one, thicken, beautiful. Uh, default bend radius here is five. Default uh, wall thickness is five, good, good. And we're going in the correct direction, going straight up, good. Let's stick with the game plan here. We're gonna pick this edge. When I was making my tutorial, I showed you guys that you can add the flange command to the S key so that you can just pick an edge and then jump right into flange. That's a really nice time saver in on shape. This is going to use that hold line option, and this is going to go to a height of 75. And there we go. 
Uh, quick sanity check here. If I pick this face and this face, and then I look down here in the corner, on shape immediately tells me that that distance is 75. So I'm just kind of, as I'm learning more and more about on shape, I'm trying to make sure that 75 isn't like the length of this edge, for example. Uh, so just kind of uh, trying to make sure that I got everything where I expect it to be. Let's create a new sketch here. And this is going to be a sketch of a, uh, essentially of a rectangle. I guess I could just make a rectangle like this. And then I could take this section of the rectangle and press Q. That's going to make it for construction. And then I can uh, window all that geometry. Actually, maybe I'll drop in a line there first. So let's make a line here with our 45 degree angle. And... I know I don't really need to trim it, but I just like to trim it to make sure everything is nice and tidy. So we'll make that at 45 degrees because the total angle there is 90. Now I'm going to window all this and mirror it across. And then I am going to finish up with my dimensioning of this thing. So this is at 70. And this is at 20. And the distance down is 45. And then I'll just get in here with this circle. And this has diameter of just kind of looking at this thing. Oh, that's in, oh, it's a, it's a countersink. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that's all right. I can still make it through. So we'll go eight for the diameter there. Let's at least get this, uh, get this located correctly. And then I can go back in with that secondary cut. So this is going to be eight with a distance here of um, 15. And then a distance across. Let's mirror that, I guess. And then a distance across here at 93. Okay, so all of that can be cut. That doesn't look right. These look too far off to the side there compared to that section view. It's kind of interesting. 70, 93. Why do they look? They look too close to the edges there. I wonder if something went funky with that bend. Shouldn't have. Hmm. Let's see here. Just make sure I'm not missing anything on the print. 93, 70. That's section view. I mean... I know with the Ivan exploit, it probably doesn't matter, but it matters because it's... You know, it's not right. <laughs> bothers me when it's not right it's interesting like this one the flange comes straight out i wonder if the flange comes straight out if we're looking down on this thing from the top yeah it doesn't mm. interesting it's like it comes straight off here instead of coming instead of coming down that's really interesting okay well I don't know if I like that too much. How do we fix it? That's the other question. I mean, it seems like if it's if it's tucked in even further, it'll actually be a worse situation as far as that dimension being not centered. Like, hmm, interesting, interesting, interesting. All right, I'm going to take a look at the chat here, see if the chat pros have something for me. Yeah, it's true, but it should be, you know, it should be... Uh, uh, yeah, I, I see what you're saying there. Um, who said it? Gonzalo. It's true what that's where the section view is, but it should still be, you know, um, centered, ultimately, is what I'm trying to say. I'm going to keep going. I got to just keep going. Uh, so this is 8 through 12 by 90. Oh, did I make the dimension wrong there? Was that supposed to be? I think I might have made that dimension 12 instead of 8. No, I did it. Okay, 8, eight through. So let's go in here and add some circles here. And we're gonna make that one 12. And we're gonna make this one 12. And then we're gonna do an extrude. And this extrude is going to be drafted. And that's gonna be 45 uh, the other way. There we go. One second. I don't want that whole thing, I just want that. And that. Hmm. Man, the plot thickens, huh? It's like, I can't just get the. Interesting. Let's 
I may have to get rid of one of these. I know that the the, the sheet metal solver, uh, depending on, you know, the, it's different for the different CAD systems, but I know that I've kind of run into some stuff like this in my limited experience so far. Yeah, interesting, interesting, interesting. Yeah, whole tool. Let's try it. It's a good, great suggestion. Um, let's go back to this and get rid of this and this. And then let's show that sketch. And let's give it a try with the whole tool. So this is going to be a counter sink. And it's going to be 8 through and 12 and 90 degrees. And then sketch points for the holes will be this point here and this point here. So yeah, it doesn't like that. Uh, th this is this is pretty interesting because it's kind of like um, uh, it's almost like the normal cut in SolidWorks. Like it doesn't like the idea of this hole not being ninety degrees to the sheet metal. Um, it just kind of doesn't. It really doesn't want that. It's really interesting. All right, well, we're just going to do it as an 8 millimeter hole, um, and we'll we'll have to come back to this. And um, this is this is uh, this is really interesting. Yeah, definitely a cool learning experience here. Um, but let's let's keep going just so that we can finish this up and get to the next challenge for all of you, uh, so that you can test your skills here. So we're gonna go. I know I don't have to close this off, but I just like the Star Trek symbol. So we're gonna go extrude remove get rid of all that junk then we're going to go to a circular pattern and that circular pattern is going to be of this entire part and it's going to be around this axis here and it's going to be to three instances and it's going to be an add and that way it all gets merged together and i think i forgot my fillets there before i did that circular pattern so let's get those fillets s key fillet and that is going to be at six and there's five instances of that so six and it's going to go here 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 and here and there we go and then we can roll forward to that circular pattern circular pattern and add and that should get you pretty close yeah see look it's kind of interesting here too we're getting now like corner relief on that thing i feel like um I can't remember if it was Jack Sato who was running. I think it was Jack Sato who was running this against Jihad and Rafa. So he was kind of running into some of this stuff too. So I think I'm going to have to go back and uh, come up with a better solution for this. Like really test my sheet metal merit in the world of on shape. But uh, that'll at least get us close. I'm going to, I'm just going to kind of call it at that uh, call time on this model with that. Uh, that'll get us close. I think I need to get in there and kind of re-examine what's going on with the edge flange and with the, uh, the way that the edge flange is coming off of the model. Uh, coming off straight versus coming off uh, with that kind of additional angle on there, what that's doing to the location of the hole. I also need to get in there and figure out what I got to do to get that hole to actually be a countersink um, in sheet metal. So kind of some cool challenges that I have to look forward to, but definitely still a learning experience. Um, even though we didn't get it right this time, I think there's always an opportunity to learn from these types of runs. But uh, let's get in here now and take a look at the answer and see who came up with the correct answer. And so as we are looking through the chat here, let's see. Um, this one. Here we go. Let's see how we did. Let's go back up to the very beginning. I remember that uh, it was Will who came in 615.98 or 616. Victor right behind him, 616. Victor says, nice work, Will. Very nice. Um, we got, oops a bunch of these ah <laughs> so nice work will nice work victor uh let's see what else we got here aaron christensen coming in 601 will 616 aaron christensen 616 ricardo gene coming in 601 grams very nice omri 601 grams and striker 601 grams very nice very nice very very nice x machina gotta go goodbye thank you for joining us let's see what the correct answer is 616 grams. So that one is going to go to Will. Nicely done, Will. One point for Will so far. Let's see if he can do a clean sweep on these challenges today. We're going to jump right into your next challenge. Very nicely done to Will. Um, very nicely done to everyone. Good job, Will. GG. Good game. All right. Let's flip over to full screen here. 
Your next CAD challenge begins in three, two, one, go. What is the mass of this part in xx.xx pounds? What is the mass of this part in xx.xx pounds? Kind of a cool model here. IPS working in inches. I like it. Inches and pounds. Uh, the material is 1060 aluminum alloy. The density is 2700 kilograms per cubic meter. Grab a screen capture of this print. Move it over to your second monitor. Give this thing a try. What is the mass of this part in pounds? All right, had to go and grab my answer key. Couple of great two tall Toby features, yeah. Indeed. Indeed, indeed. All right. Hopefully that was enough time for you to grab the screen capture. I had to go and grab my answer key. And we're going to move back into... The presentation don't forget if you enjoy this type of content be sure to hit the like button it really does go a long way towards helping the channel it's one of the best things you can do one of the best and easiest things you can do and uh don't forget that on november 11th we got the tournament files to finals to talktoby.com slash finals if you happen to be in the area visit to talktoby.com slash finals you can sign up uh the lansdale pennsylvania area you can sign up we're gonna open the doors at 10 a.m in this epic arena. We're going to have some really good uh, really good matchups that day, I'm sure. The champion of the four brackets are going to to are going to dial in and we're going to we're going to have a really good uh, really good tournament, really good tournament matchups that day. So, very excited about this, very excited about the finals, very excited about being in a new location. And uh, I hope you guys can join us. You know, even if you can't join us in person, be sure to join us live. I did do an interview with Joko a couple weeks ago. It was a lot of fun. If you haven't had a chance to watch that yet, be sure to check it out. And let's see here. we got any other news going on right now? I'm doing some training this week. My level two parts class is kicking off this week live with some students at a company learning about lofts and sweeps and guide curves and multi-body design and all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, so if you're ever interested in doing any kind of training with me, just reach out to me. Let me know. Uh, we can definitely get it on the calendar. And um, let's see what else we got. All right, let's see what people were asking for earlier in the chat. I know that first one was kind of a whiff. They can't all be home runs. 56, 53, 58, 58, 53. So let's see what we got here. What are we looking at? What's 58? Is that the one that I did? Is that the tri bracket? Oh, the housing. Okay. I want to do this one, huh? A couple of people asking for 58. Strikers asking for 56. Which one was 56? The counter shaft. Another good one there. All right. Let's see what else we got. And 53 was the socket. Okay. So a lot of good, a lot of good suggestions there. I think I'm going to do the, uh, I think I'll do this one, the housing. Um, this will be a fun one to try to rip through in, in 10 minutes in on shape. We'll see, <laughs> see how good I am. Um, so when it comes to this model, again, it's always the same. You always start out the same way. You always start out by asking yourself, uh, what's my game plan for this model? You know, and things that I look at are like the mass is in pounds. So I have to make sure in on shape, I go and change my units to pounds and inches, especially change it to inches. The units are in inches. I look at things like um, where is the origin going to be located? And although it's tempting to kind of look at the front plane and maybe put the origin here, uh, because this dimension is coming off of there and this dimension is coming off of there. Um, I think the other thing we want to think about is like this section view here. You know, this shape is probably going to be a revolve. This is certainly going to be a revolve cut. 
So maybe it makes sense to have the origin located right here at the center of this hole where a bunch of the dimensions are coming from this middle hole here, but then also uh, kind of extruding out in the two directions, leaving me with a plane that's um, exactly at the right spot for that revolve feature. So these are always things that you think about and then you get into what is the game plan on this model. And I think that in the, in the case of this model here, the game plan is gonna be, I'll start out with a boss extrude that kind of encompasses this shape here. Uh, then I will create some type of a revolved shape over here. So to kind of revolve this weird angly shape, then I'm gonna have this extra region up here that I'm gonna have to fill in somehow. So whether that's with an extrude or maybe even a delete face, if I can use it, I would love to use delete face. Then I'll do uh, cut revolve to cut out this interior shape um, oh no, sorry, I missed, there's a little like lubrication port over here, so I'll make sure I get that geometry on there, and then I'll do a cut revolve, cut out that shape, and then I'll finish off with the cuts here, which I think are, or some of them are counter bores, two of them are counter bores, so I could probably just do that with the whole command in on shape. So, let's give this a try, let's see how long it takes us, we're gonna blast through this one, this is not gonna be tutorial, but more of me trying to speed model, it's gonna be some speed modeling here from Tobe. So let's go create a new document. This is going to be called 23-T-58 uh, housing. Remember, this is in the public space. So if you sign up for a free account at Onshape, you can just search for this file and then you can make a copy of it into your public space or into your private space. And then you can uh, uh, create or examine the tree that I created and you can kind of, you know, see what you can learn from it. You can see the actual tree. You can work from that part take that part and turn it into your own part forgot to uh, change the units so this is going to be 1.25 in for inches and there we go and then i'm just gonna i'm actually gonna exit the sketch and change the units right away so workspace units uh this is going to be inch and this is going to be pounds okay let's get back into that sketch and let's keep going here we're going to create a circle here in the middle at uh one inch and we're going to create a sketch here at 1.25 and we're going to say that these are all horizontal this this and this are all horizontal and this is coincident to the origin I meant to do that on the on the sketching part of it and then these are at a distance of one inch and this is at a distance of two inches that's it for my sketch. Keep your sketches simple. Always good advice. Let's do an extrude here. This is going to go out to a depth of 2.5 minus 1.5. I can't do that in my head, so I have to let the software do it for me. And then I'm going to go in a second direction. And for my second direction, that's going to go to 1.5. And there we go. That should set me up nicely for that first feature. Now we're going to go to our next feature, which is going to be here on the front plane, begin a sketch, orient the view. And like I said, my plan for this is going to be to do a revolve. So it's going to come down, come over, come up. There's a little step kind of up here. Like so. And then uh, this is going to, it's going to be revolved. So I could either you know, make a, an explicit construction line or I could just revolve about the existing line. But the nice thing about the construction line is you can get the double dimensions. So I could go here to the construction line and cross over. And then I could say that that's going to have a diameter of 1.75. And I can do the same thing up top, uh, which that's going to have. Actually, that one just has a radius. So <laughs> didn't need to do that anyway. 0 0.625 for the radius there. And then the distance from the origin to the center of that hole is 1.75 and the um one oh i knocked my num lock off there uh and then we're going to say that the distance to well this is just going to be tangent these guys here so i can just press t to make them tangent and then the distance uh the angle here is going to be 70 and the height to that connection point is 1.5 and the total height here is two inches boom i was almost right there it was almost perfect to begin with revolve and that's going to revolve about this and that looks good then this part has this like little bit of trickiness where on the bottom it just kind of wraps into the model as a circle so like down here it wraps in as a circle but up top, it's more of like a tombstone shape. This is kind of the tricky part about this challenge. Uh, so when it comes to this upper region here, we have to we have to do something. 
Um, there's a few ways you could solve this, but probably the, the most straightforward way would be just to take this and do a convert or a use, a project, um, and then just take this geometry here and bring it over. And then we're going to want that to align, uh, you know, align in both directions. So it's going to need to align here. It's going to need to be coincident. Really, this should be tangent as well. Uh, so did I grab too many things there? I think I did. I guess I could just make this vertical too. That's kind of the same thing as making a tangent. Uh, this is going to be horizontal. All right, that's good. And then for this one, maybe I'll just show that earlier sketch. And that way I can take this point and this line and make them coincident. And now I can do an extrude. And that extrude is going to go up to next. So let's reverse the direction on that. So it's going down. And then that's just going to go, I think I can just go up to next. Let's see if that'll fill it in. Oh, yeah. Boom. Easy. T too easy. Too easy. Too easy. Now, in Onshape, just like in other CAD packages, you can go in here to View, and you can say Tangent Edges Phantom. And that's kind of a nice way of um, getting a quick visual indicator if you've got the tangency that you're expecting or if you're working with a hard edge. And so, of course, we want the, the tangency in this case. So now what's nice is that we are nice and lined up here with the uh, front plane for uh, centering that lubrication uh, um, port. And so this is all I need to do is just make a plane here that comes over to a distance of 2.75. And that's going to give me the perfect location to create a new sketch here for that lubrication port. And I can line it up here right on the front plane, uh, which is also kind of nice. And so we're going to make that at a diameter of 0 0.5 and then at a distance from the bottom of the part to this point here of 0 0.375. And now that can also just get extruded up to next. So by you know thinking about where we were going to locate the origin, we were able to um, set ourselves up for success here when we got down to this feature. So now you know now we need to do a cut revolve. Well, again, because we we were um, thinking ahead about you know our our plan for the origin, we can set ourselves up pretty nicely here for this cut revolve. So we could even uh, we could even show that earlier sketch that we did of the revolve, and that way we could maybe reuse some of this geometry. Like I could take this this uh, vertical line that's going up through the middle here and reuse that so that I know I'm in the right spot, and maybe even use some of that other geometry. So this is going to come over. It's going to come down, it's going to come over at an angle, it's going to come down to the bottom here, and then it's going to close off here. And now this and this are going to be parallel and are going to be at a distance of 0 0.5. There we go, 0 0.5. And then this is going to be its diameter. Uh, that diameter is supposed to be 0 0.75, so I'll do 0 0.75 over 2. And then this bottom one, I'll do the same thing, 1.25. 1.25 over 2. And now we can do a, another revolve. And this time, this is going to be a remove. And our revolve axis is going to be this. And I love the way Onshape shows the preview as you're creating your geometry. And so now I can hide that earlier sketch of the revolve. I can take this face here and make a circle. I probably could have just done that with a hole as well. Uh, but I'll just do this with a circle here. And that's going to have a diameter of 0.25. And we're going to do a remove. And that will go, we can do that one up to next as well. Oh, yeah, that looks good. So basically, that whole part of the part looks good compared to the drawing. So now all I need to do is those holes. So I'll start out here with the hole command. And this is going to be a counter bore. And that counter bore is going to be, uh, what is it? 0 0.375 tab, 0 0.75 tab, 0 0.25. And now here I can use this option, the make connector option. So select a make connector, and then I just pick this edge here, and that recognizes the make connector. Pick this edge here, that recognizes the make connector. And that gives us those first two holes. And now we can do one more. This is going to be a simple hole, and this one is going to use a diameter of 0 0.5. And once again, we'll do make connector, and we'll just pick this edge here. Boom. And there we go. I think that looks pretty good. Let's go down to our material here, assign material. That material is going to be 2 Tall Toby custom material of ABS. And then we'll just pick the part, pick this mass properties here, and 0 0.312 pounds. Let's see if we got it correct. What's that number again? 58. 58. Oh, 0 0.319. Oh, the fillets. Ah, the fillets. 
It's supposed to be 0 0.319. It's always right when you submit it that you realize, like, oh, I missed something. So that's going to be a fillet radius of 0 0.375 in four places. One, two, three, four. Let's get that mass properties. Come on, 0 0.319. Yes, did it. Whoops, there we go. Boom, 0 0.319. That's how you do it, baby. That's how you speed run apart. All right. Oh, takes a lot out of you. Bet you guys are feeling it too, huh? On these weekly challenges. All right, guys, if you like that, don't forget, hit the like button. Always good to hit the like button. Hit the share button. Also, also very good. And uh, GGTTT, thank you very much, Rich Penn. Appreciate it. Let's get into it here and find out who got the points. So for the second one, it looks like our first answer came in from Aaron C. 10.277. Victor K. 10.33. Uh, Aaron C. Revising 10.279. Ricardo G. 10.599. Will 11.05. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, Omri 11.44. Victor K. 10.28. And missed the 5.75 dimension. Been there. I missed the uh, radius, right? I missed the fillets. 10.276. Uh, let's keep going here. 10.26, 10.28 revised. It's okay, Toby. Speed modeling is stressful. Thank you. It is indeed. Correct answer here is 10.28 pounds. Who got it first? Let's see here. Looks like Aaron C. 10.277, 10.28 pounds is correct. So that's one point for Aaron C and one point for Will, right? Will got the first point today. I think Will got the first one. Yeah, and one point for Will, 616. Yep. Nice job, Aaron C and Will. Very nicely done. And nice job to everybody who got it right. 10.28 pounds was the correct answer. That's a lot to do in just, you know, 15 minutes. Um, it's a cool challenge. So GG to everyone. Yes, indeed. Everybody gets a GG day. Everybody gets points. So congratulations to everybody. Congratulations to all of our winners. Don't forget to check out the, uh, if you want to learn more about Onshape, check out the Onshape, uh, SolidWorks Expert Learns Onshape YouTube series on the Onshape channel. More videos coming out very soon. Uh, don't forget to check out Alibre.com. Powerful yet easy to use 3D CAD software that's affordable. Don't forget to check out Joko Engineering. Joko Engineering makes all your 3D CAD dreams come true. And, of course, check out SolidBox, mysolidbox.com for professional 3D CAD solutions. And RevoPoint coming out with a new Morocco 3D scanner. There's a link down in the description to sign up for the early bird special. And I want to say thank you all so much for being the most amazing chat ever. Don't forget to come on back this Saturday, October 21st. We're going for it with the Elite 8. And I hope you guys all have a great day. Saturday, October 21st, the Elite Eight. Model Monday Live next week, 1 p.m. Don't forget, guys, if I send out videos, practice model shorts, tutorials, anything social media, please just take it and share it, reshare it, uh, like it, uh, but especially share it to your network. Uh, it really, really helps me, helps grow the channel, and I just really appreciate it. And that's it for today. Thank you guys so much. This has been awesome. Awesome episode of Model Monday Live. I look forward to seeing everybody at the tournament this Saturday. It's going to be epic. See you, everybody.